So we are now three weeks into the Angelfish Aquarium build. Things have gone pretty well, I'd say. Not the best, I've had better starts, but I can't complain to be honest. Right, first things first, the fish are really healthy and that is one of the main things. Look at the back there, look. Hello, Mr. Angel, out in the foreground. Show, well, not foreground, but out in the open. But they're not the only ones. Look, over here. Hello. Hello, guys. <laughs> awesome. Rummy noses as well. Look at those noses. You know, look at these little Rudolphs just swimming everywhere. Sign of a healthy tank, that is, when you've got proper reds on your uh, Rummy nose Tetras. You can see in the background there as well, look, the Cardinals all staying back there. They, they tend to stay a little bit further back and the rummies just do at the front like, like puppy dogs. And the, uh, the cardinals hang around in sort of the, the greenery, if you like, a little bit of refuge. Uh, these fish now know that I'm the feeder and that's why they're all in the foreground getting ready, look. So they're not even scared now. They come right up to the top, which is absolutely brilliant. I love it. When the fish get to that stage where they understand you and know that you're the feeder is when you you can be sort of sure that they're gonna be good, they're gonna feed well, they're gonna grow much larger. This one thinks that that snail is food. No, no, leave it. <laughs> Now, of course, as with any new tank, you're gonna get your little startup problems, little issues. It takes a good month or so for you, before your tank is like fully bedded in. Is that the right word? You know, you can get all sorts of algae phases within that time. You get like your diatom phase. I think that's come and gone now. And then you can get what I've got now, which is like a little sort of murky greenness over everything. Although I think that's dead and I can actually clean that all off and I don't think it will return. The reason I say that is because at the moment it's not getting worse, it's just staying exactly the same. And before I started messing around with a tank, I wanted to let it just sort of do its thing. I always find that doing nothing sometimes for a certain length of time can be better than doing a ton of things at the same time because you don't really know what's going on at that point, do you know what I mean? So for instance, down here look, on the rock, we've got a little bit of string algae. We've got a little bit of sort of surface algae on this substrate, which I'm not worried about to be honest because I know that as soon as I sort of stir it up, it'll actually just be gone and it'll just, I don't think it will come back. Again, a little bit of string algae there on that piece of Java fern, but that hasn't got any bigger at all. So I'm kind of, that's what I'm thinking. It's just, it's settled now. Some more on the wood there, but that's actually getting less as the days go by. Now, to be honest with you, if I didn't have all of these tanks and say I was like you guys, or most of you guys anyway, at home that have just got one or two tanks, I'd probably be cleaning it all the time and making sure everything was like perfect. But with the sheer amount of tanks that we've got in this whole place, and obviously I've got the other room as well. If I was to sit there and just every time I saw a little bit of algae go and try and clean that and clean that, I'd never get anything else done. So that's what I like to do with new setups. I just leave them. This is a great example of that, actually, this tank here. I didn't do anything to this for the first month or so. I did water testing to make sure I didn't need to change any water, and it turns out I didn't. But other than that, I did nothing at all. And look at it now, look. This was a sort of um, freshwater reef tank that I did, and there's you won't find any algae anywhere. Look, the boost completely clean. Down here actually when I first set it up, this boost came from another tank that had lots of algae on and it started to spread for a little bit. Nothing on any of the plants, which is so good. And that was again, just from letting it do its thing, letting it settle in and not being too sort of, I don't know, impatient with it. I mean, I'm, I'm one of the most impatient people ever, but I have found with algae and tanks getting settled, it does take a month or so. It's just as simple as that. You need to expect it. Every now and again, it doesn't happen through sort of some sort of magic that we can't understand. But <laughs> most of the time you need to, oh, look, hello. This is the female um, epistogramma in there who thought that leaf was food, but it's not. Where's your male friend? Oh, there he is. There's the boy. Looking gorgeous, son. I'll give you some food in a second, but we're just a little bit busy at the moment. I just turned off all the main lights and everything just looks way better, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know why I don't do that. The lights up here are like like really sort of orangey and they give everything an orangeness. So when I turn them off, you actually get the true colors of everything. But yeah, and enough about that. Um, what I'm gonna be doing next is preparing a tank ready because I wanna put some Corys in with these guys. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna take them from other tanks or if I'm gonna get new ones, not decided yet. I might take them from other tanks. I've got really good connection actually dotted around. Yeah, over here in the cherry barb tank, look, down here in the corner. Oh, no, come back. Oh, 
Well, there was quite a few of these. Are they fairy Corys? I think they're fairy Corys. Yeah, there's quite a few of them in here. And uh, you just saw a little group of them, but there's about 20. And they tend, most of them tend to stay at the back the majority of the time. And then they come to the front when it's feeding. Um, I don't know why they were there then, because there's no food in there at the moment. Interesting. Anyway, so yeah, I've got those ones. And then in the Cory only tank, which is no longer a Cory only tank, oh, literally as I walked in the door then, they all just ran off and hid. There's quite a good little collection in here. You can see one albino one at the back there. And then there's some of the um, pygmy Corys as well dotted around. So this tank's actually home to quite a few other of uh, different fish now. Look at that, that's the killie fish. I can't remember what type. Um, there's another one in here as well. Yeah, there we go. That's a gardenia, I think. Again, I'm not sure on the names of them. There's so many different kinds of killie fish from around the world, isn't there? I also put the sparkling grammys in here, which are now a lot more confident and coming out, see? Hello. Turn to the side, show off. Yeah, there we go. Look at that, on cue, does exactly what he's told. But yeah, we've got three of those in here, so they're doing great as well. But anyway, my point was, I've got more quarries in here too. But yeah, anyway, the point is, we've got options, haven't we? Now we need to get the tank sorted because we don't want to be messing around with it after the fish are in. We might as well do it beforehand and then everyone's sort of chilled, hopefully, fingers crossed. Right, first thing I want to do is get in and stir up this substrate. Look at that, look, instantly, that cleans the whole sort of algae situation on there up. And as always, it's a lighting issue because any of the shaders areas on, on here, they, they don't actually have any algae patches at all. Like right close to the rocks here, there's no algae. I'll stir it anyway, just because I'm there, why not? And the whole time I'm doing this, guys, whenever I do any maintenance, I always keep the filters running. I know some people turn them off, but I just feel like after I've done all this, I'm gonna clean out the filter and all this crud getting stirred up and into the water column is gonna get picked up by it and then I can export it, can't I? Take it out, clean the, uh, clean the filter, and then everything's gone. So yeah, straight away there, we're looking like much, much better. The tank's gone murky, but I've now got these two for my next weapons. I'm gonna go with this brush for taking off any of the hair algae, just put it in and twirl it. And then this one for, the, uh, for some of the rocks and for the wood as well. It's really easy, actually. I'd suggest you get one of these. I think it's just like a pipe cleaner. Um, I ordered it off Amazon, and uh, look at that, off, done. If the uh, algae was still sort of alive and kicking, it would definitely not come off as easy as that. I'm sure you've seen it before where you just keep scrubbing and nothing comes off at all, but that worked an absolute treat. I'm just gonna go around all the different plants now and just give them a good wave as well. Cause that's, look, look at all that crud just coming into the water column. Again, that filter's gonna pick all of that up. I'm not doing a water change on this tank because I don't do many water changes. <laughs> and I'll do a water test, obviously. I'll make sure that uh, a water change isn't required. Look at all that, that's like dead algae. Look at it, it's just coming off so easy. It's not attached to anything anymore, even though it's still green. I guess that's just what, look at it. Yes, perfect, all coming off so easy. I guess it's just, um, you know, it's gone through its phase now and there's no sort of excess nutrients in the water column for it to survive. So it's just sort of sat on there Dormant, would that be the right word? I don't even know. But to be honest with you, the main ones I want to tackle are these rock. Oh, look at that, it's all just coming off. To be honest, with the amount of waste in here, it's probably worth doing a quick water change, isn't it? I think it'll be beneficial. Like there's a lot floating in the water column now. I mean, the filter will pick it up. I'll see how it goes. I'll leave the filter running and just see what we get out of all of this. If it picks it all up and I can just clean the filter out, that's ideal. I mean, then the water's more sort of stabilizing itself and that's what you really want in a, in a planted tank. The, the tank fixes itself and you don't have to do tons and tons of work because that is not fun for anyone, I don't think, anyway. A little bit of maintenance like trimming up, a little bit of cleaning, that is enjoyable and that can be relaxing, but when you're constantly battling algae, it keeps coming back, I can imagine how disheartening that will be. Well, I know because I've had it myself in the past. And often it's because I've been changing too much too quickly and it resulted in, in just like a massive imbalance in everything. But I think we're gonna be all right with this one now. Straight away, these rocks are looking so much better. And that algae's just brushing off so easily with minimal effort. Okay, we are looking good. Well, we're not looking good, are we? Because there's so much crud floating around. So what I'll do now is I'll also stick in an additional filter just to help clear that all up. One with a really fine sort of filter floss in there and that'll pick all of this stuff up and we can take it out of the tank. And the filter is exactly the same as the one that I've already got in there. I'll get the air out because otherwise that just sprays for ages. Yeah, it's the same as the one I've got in there, um, but it hasn't got a spray bar, it's just gonna come straight out. It'll look like a high flow for a minute, but it's only just temporary, isn't it? And away we go. 
Yeah, so that's blowing it all around. I can see it all moving. What I'll do as well is I'll keep going back in there and wafting at certain areas, and I'll probably clean that out and redo it again, just to make sure that everything's like really clean. And hopefully it's picking it up, but you can really see the crud all moving around now, look. It's not gonna stand a chance. Look, already the filter floss has gone green. So that was brand new. So yeah, we're working. It should be clear in no time at all. Right, we're not clear yet, but I just wanted to show you the blue coming out now on the angelfish, look at that. So, so blue is they're starting to get much more comfortable with the tank now. And they're just starting to look fantastic, aren't they? Look at that one right at the front there. That's the biggest one of all of them, I'm pretty sure. So it's now been four days since I did all that algae scraping. Obviously the extra filter is now out. The water's completely cleared up. I didn't do a water change in the end because I just, I didn't think it was needed. We've removed the dead algae, that's out of the tank. The water testing showed that all the values were really good. A little bit of nitrate in there, but I like some nitrate in my tanks because I just think it does the plants fantastic. Now the majority of all the algae has now completely gone. It's not even coming back, which is great. But there is still some of the usual algae that you kind of expect in a sort of tank full of fish with quite high lighting. So first of all though, let's look at the beautiful angels now, all coming into the foreground. Hello guys, sorry if my voice sounds a bit funny, I've got that sort of cold thing that's going around. It's just a cold, there's no reason to panic. But look, yeah, the angels, right in the foreground, they are not scared of anything at all anymore, which is so cool to see. There was obviously more than that. Um, like I say, some take residence back there, and behind that one. So if I fed them now, they will tend to come out. I'll do some feeding them in actually, because it's good to watch. Look at this one, ready to go. Feed me. But yeah, up on that top piece of wood, remember there was loads of algae on there. That's now completely clear, which is awesome. The only place I'm seeing algae really is on the glass. And that's like a little bit of green dust algae. Not a lot at all though. I can completely deal with that. I'm happy with that as well. It's like the easiest to clean, I always say that. Looks like I missed a few spots though, like that rock there has got some algae on, but that's all right. It's not. It's not hurting, it actually looks quite nicely aged. And there's a few spots like down there where there's a little bit of uh, thread algae as well, but again, not worried about that at all. Look at this guy's colors, look. Look at that sort of blue sheen on the top part of it, so nice. Oh, but I think this one here, this one here is like the star of the show. Look at the size of its top fin and uh, the shape, everything, yeah, brilliant. It's not the biggest, I think this one is the biggest. There we go, turn to the side, look at that. Look at that wingspan. I don't think you call it a wingspan, but uh, never mind. What is it with you guys? Leave the snails alone. <laughs> so yeah, that is the tank mostly taken care of. It's like running nicely now. I'd say it's settled in well, and it's definitely time to add more fish. So I don't want all that algae building up on the substrate layer again. It's just time to add the quarries. At the start, I told you guys about this, and I was thinking maybe I should take some out of that aquarium, and that aquarium, and that aquarium. Now, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go to the shop and get some brand new ones. The other ones are all settled in their own habitats and they're enjoying it, so why change it at the moment? If I was gonna change things for them, I'd change it for all of them, but I don't wanna take, I don't wanna pick a mix, do you know what I mean? I think they're fine in all their groups. Let's add a new group. Now, the question is though, do I get one big group or do I get lots of little groups? Hmm, I mean, I find that different types of quarries all enjoy each other's company and swim together, so I think that's actually, both options are okay. Just depends what they got actually and how many I wanna see. Hello. <laughs> How we doing? Good, good. Lighting's terrible. We are back at everyone's <laughs> favourite shop, made ahead aquatics in Taunton, but it's actually Wellington. Yeah. Uh, every time. Uh, this is Matt's part of the show, obviously. I just said to him, I'm just a cameraman. Um, of course. What am I doing here? <laughs> no. I can't remember, why are you here? I'm here for, <laughs> so I want to get Corey's for the angelfish tank. Yes, nice. But if you think other things as well would be good for, you know, stirring up the uh, sand, a little yeah. bit of algae collect on it just where there's no movement. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. No one, no one shuffling around the bottom at the moment. That no. makes sense. No, everything else is sorted, but we just need that. Perfect. Corys will be good, I think. But yeah, um, we've got... I think you're going to want them for a future thing. What do you mean? Well, we've got some really cool little loaches in. Okay. Oh, oh what, you, what we were talking about. Yeah. So, the, so these are... These are slightly different to the ones I showed you, but yeah, okay. it's another species. So we've got some really cool little bits in like that, which You're they would work well in there. Right. But it's not then South American, so. Oh no no no! I'm not keeping this one so. No. It's just the angelfish tank. The, angel the fish, fish can tank. be what the. Okay. Do you know what's really weird at the moment? You're being highlighted, oh. like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, are these the ones that we were saying? Because I was saying that I was going to be wanting to do like an Indian themed tank, yeah? yeah. 
Is this what we're talking about? Yeah, we've got a few different species in. This is one of the species, so you can see them all flying whoa. around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So what, are they uh, hiders or were they... They're normally quite active, they're very fast, so um, a little bit like the hillstream loaches. Okay. Um, so yeah, a little bit like that, where they're very darty, very quick. I'm fine um, with that, as long as I see them. Yeah, yeah, you can okay, still cool. see them. So Sweet. they'd be cool, but that being said, we have got some awesome quarries in. Okay. So, yeah. Can we do both? What's that, sorry? Is both an option? Yeah, both would work. They're, they're both very peaceful, both chilled out, so they both get on in there. Um, so it depends if you want really chunky, because we've got really chunky lapardus. I believe they are. Whoa! Yeah, really chunky. I mean, it will work, won't it, because it's a big tank. Yeah. So these are the ones that aren't actually quarries, is no, that they right? are quarries. They are quarries. They are quarries. So you're thinking of Brockus. Yes. Which is the bigger non-quarry. Um, okay. But yeah, they're cool. You've got things like then skunks down in the bottom. Okay, oh yeah, I've always liked the skunks. I yeah, they're, they're really quite cool. cool. And I love that black arch on the yeah. sort of body. It just looks really cool. And they're different because I, I haven't got them as well. Okay, so. nice. So that'd be a cool option. Then, now I'm going to have to remember because I've only looked around once this morning. Venezuelan black. Oh, I, I have had before, but do like. Yeah. Obviously, similis, which is um, smudge spots that you've had what, before. Yeah, I've got the smudge spots. Bronzes. You must have had I've got bronzes. Before. One of our first quarries. I mean, I think that's the case for most people, isn't it, really? Yeah, bronzes or peppered um, are normally the first quarries. Then we've got false julii, which is trilineatus. Yep, I've had those. Whoa! Off they go. These are all hiding. Oh, no, they're not. There's one. Those are false networks, so they're really cool. I really like them. They're probably my favourite that are in at the moment. They're all behind there. I can just about pick them up. There we go. Yeah, they're really cool. They're, they're quite similar to the um, to, yeah. the, to the Julie. All oh, very, it's... yeah, very sort of, yeah, close in the pattern sort of department. Um, then, I think they're mostly standard over here. We've got things like albinos, um, albinos, peppered. Yeah, so they're all the sort of more common ones on this one. Oh. So yeah, if you want interesting, we're over there. Okay, see, now... Yeah. Remember when I said to you before, like, I think that everyone's like, oh, you must get, like, ten of the same. Yep. I always found that the different species, they all mingle together anyway, yeah. and they yeah. all act as one. Yeah, they, they get, obviously, once they realise that there's no predators, once they realise that there's nothing that's going to really harm them, most fish don't actually group or don't actually shoal properly anyway. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, my quarries at home, there's two or three different species in there. And they just mingle and, you know, they'll be off on their own. And, yeah, they don't really pay attention to their individual groups. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Maybe a little group of each one. Yeah, that's um, what I'm thinking, like five five of each. Yeah, Something exactly. like that That'd would work perfect. quite well. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't worry about all the same because they do. They end up getting so confident that they just don't really mind. Okay, well, I'm watching out the corner of my eye over here, these Julii. And um, I'm thinking they, I definitely want to, five of those would be cool, I think. Yeah, nice little group of them. Should I save the loaches, do you reckon? I think so, the, personally. Yeah. I think they'd be good. Because I've got some other bits and pieces, and we've got another delivery tonight. No, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, and then another one the next week. Okay, week. okay, yeah, yeah. They're definitely happening, but not for this. Yeah. I'll save that for the proper Indian build. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, right, yeah, we'll go with the Julii, and then we'll just get the rest of what you think will go well, and then I'll just surprise as I put them in. Nice. Sounds like a plan. All right, bag them up. Right, we are back from the fish shop. Now the first thing we need to do is get the fish temperature acclimating, which shouldn't take too long because um, outside temperature is pretty warm today. Oh, I better turn off the lights as well, didn't I? Yeah, probably should have done that beforehand, but not to worry, we've done it now. Oh okay, well, yeah, you guys don't know what I've actually got yet, do you as well? <laughs> I don't know if you can see from there, can you see them? Oh, you'll see those are oh, awesome. Okay, so one of the species I've already got, but I just love them, so I had to get more. <laughs> it has been about 20 minutes or so. We have got all of the quarries. Over here, we've got the gold laser quarries. I've already got them. Um, I had them before, obviously. I've got them over in this tank. Yeah, this one here, this is the Rare Fish Aquarium. Gold laser quarries aren't that common, are they, really? Not for me, anyway. This is the only second time I've seen them in the shop, which is why I had to get them again. Look, there's one there. It's so beautiful, isn't it? And then here we've got the False Julie quarries, and this one are Napo quarries as well. So, so three sort of rare 
rarer Corys there, not that common, you don't see them that often, do you? So I'm gonna put them all, all in together, I really wanna see how they behave. They might hide straight away, to be honest, but that's fine, they can do what they want. Eventually, they're gonna be everywhere, aren't they? Okay, I'm ready, I've got all the Corys in this jug here. Let's just put them straight in, see where they go. Woohoo! Okay, straight away, straight down on the substrate. Oh, there's still loads of them left. Sorry, guys. A few more, off you go. There we go, I didn't tilt it up enough. <laughs> All down on the substrate, exactly what we want. Yeah, look at these guys. Look, they're all huddled together at the moment. I mean, it's no surprise, is it? They're staying perfectly still, probably to avoid any detection until they determine that it's a safe place. It's quite interesting how they've all sort of split up. I mean, they will feel so much safer when they get together in a big group, which won't take long to happen, but me stood here with a camera in their face really isn't gonna help them matters, is it? Right, so now the next day, guys, um, I didn't wanna get too close because I know they're all gonna probably go and hide. I've only been in the studio for a few minutes, and they're not used to me walking around near the tank yet. But look, they're all grouping up so well. Hang on, let me get a bit closer. Can we get closer? I'm zoomed as well as stepping very slowly. Hi guys, no, don't run, don't run. That's cool though, look. See, like I said in the shop, they all seem to hang around together. They're not sort of worried about what, you know, species is what, because they're all basically the same, aren't they? I mean, you know, at a biological level, I don't think they're different. It's just patterns, isn't it? And I guess that's just to blend into whatever sort of natural habitat these guys were sort of bred with. You know, like the strongest pattern that matches the environment will tend to survive, have more offspring that look similar, but oh, it's so cool when they move like that. That's not all of them, is it? So we've got all five of the uh, golden lasers there. No, we've got, and then we've got four of the uh, Napo, and it's okay, so where's the other ones then? Probably hiding around the back here. Oh look, I can see a couple in that corner. I don't know if you can make that out. Probably gonna be some in that back corner as well, and then more than likely in this middle section. So the point is, they've got options, they've got places to go. Oh, I've just, they've all gone. <laughs> I think I just scared them all, except for this little guy. Hey buddy, where's your friends? Oh, they'll come, oh, here they come. Yeah. Look at that, I love that. I love how they all move together. And just a minute ago though, I did sit down at my desk and look at it and they were doing that thing where they swim up and down the glass as well. We are probably gonna get some breeding going on with these guys. Thing is though, the angels, which are always seem to be hungry nowadays, are more than likely just gonna pick off the eggs. So the Angelfish Aquarium is progressing really, really well. I'm so happy, it's balancing out now. You know, we've got those quarries that settled in pretty much already, which is cool. If you want to keep up to date with like uh, progression on this tank and everything, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ding the button. You, you know how YouTube works. Just, yeah, just, just see you on the next one. <laughs>